In today's video, I want to talk to you about something that I have coined the Volandis effect. Now, what the Volandis effect is this. It's whenever you, as a photographer, and we see it all over the place, decide that in order to get the kind of notoriety and fame that you want, instead of pushing in your own mold and creating things on your own and creating different ideas and looks that are unique to you, or just taking little bits and pieces from people that inspire you, you change everything about yourself, the way that you shoot, the medium that you shoot and take photos, the way that you dress, potentially the way that you talk, the phrases that you use, et cetera, et cetera, in order to completely replicate someone who is having more success than you and expecting the same results, even though you're just a bad carbon copy. Now, this doesn't mean that Volandis is an offender of this. I actually named it after him because from watching him at 8K-ish subs, sitting in a dark room recording his videos to where he is right now at I don't even know how many subscribers he has. It has been a huge change and with that huge change has come a lot of people jumping on the wave that he has created. Now you've seen this with Willem Verbeek, you've seen this with um, Joe, Joe Greer, you've seen this with Peter McKinnon where people online and photographers will literally change their whole personality to match the personality of their favorite photographer. They will change their whole their, their outfits, their haircut. They will change what they say. I know so many people now that carry when they go shoot street photography and have to say, you know I got it on me in a story, in a post, on a YouTube video, just because Volandis still says, you know I got that thing on me. It is the craziest thing ever. I know people that will edit like him. I know people that shoot their videos like him. And now I'm not saying it's bad to take inspiration. That's a completely different thing. I've talked about this with my boy Dorian Coleman. Uh, him, whenever he first started off, he watched a lot of, or learned a lot about Steve McCurry. He wanted to learn about a lot of things and that helped frame where he is now in street photography. Me personally, Nacho Lopez, um, Annie Leibovitz are two of my favorite photographers ever. And a lot of the things I do are based off of some principles um, whether it's composition, lighting, um, just the candid style of shooting for both of them, whether with street or with documentary or with portraiture. A lot of the stuff I do is based off of what I've seen from them. But it doesn't mean that I'm copying everything one to one. It doesn't mean that I'm copying the exact same set. It doesn't mean that I'm copying the exact same film stock or simulation. It doesn't mean that I'm copying the exact same location. But this is something that if you think on it, if you look at everyone's Instagram, if you follow Instagrams like 120 repeat, if you follow um, you know Instagrams uh, that are about memes, about analog or about digital photography, you'll see so many people. What they do is they take everything about themselves that is unique and that is important to them their personal being in their story and they will flush all that shit away in order to try to gain clout by jumping on someone else's wave and it never ever works uh, to me this is the exact same thing as if um, you know someone being gifted a nice Leica M11 boom it's a nice brand new Leica M11 and then someone coming along and saying well hey here you go I have this nice plastic Leica M11 would you like this as well and to pay the exact same price no you're not and people, for some reason, expect to get the exact same reaction out of people for copying someone. I know someone, and I, I mean it is a one-to-one, -one, who is obsessed with a certain street photographer, obsessed with getting a certain amount of followers during a year, and obsessed with this person, to, uh, oh, this, their favorite street photographer follows them. They copy everything that, that, that they do is literally literally styled to look exactly like their favorite street photographer's photos. Every single part of their Instagram page, of their portfolio, um, everything they do is a one-to-one -one copy of this guy and they are pissed because he doesn't acknowledge someone who is literally swagger jacking every damn thing that he's ever created. The wildest thing ever. But it runs rampant in photography. A lot of times there will be people in photography, it could be you at some point, it could be me at some point, it could be anyone. We expect a certain reaction, and we feel entitled to a certain reaction. Oh, um, I went out and I shot this photo of an emotional drain pipe, and someone else shot this on film, and it got and it got a lot of likes. So I'm gonna take the exact same thing. I'm gonna shoot on Portrait 400. I'm gonna make sure uh, to leave every little bit of information in there. I'm gonna make sure to you know um, you're gonna be able to see what film it is. I'm gonna make sure to use all the right hashtags, and I want to get the exact same love and endearment that this person got. And it's not gonna happen because you're a cheap knockoff. And a lot of people think like, oh, you know, the algorithm sucks. Oh, you know, people have favorites. Oh, because I'm this, that, or the other. No, listen, 
it, is, it doesn't come down to that. You're just a cheap knockoff. I can't say that enough that if you're not being authentic to yourself and just being inspired by people, but you're being unauthentic and completely chasing after the clout by changing your personality and the way you do things to be just like someone, you will never be successful. Vivian Meyer went her whole damn life never being known as a fantastic photographer, never even being known as a photographer, never being known as really much to majority of the world out there besides maybe family, friends in her community, etc., etc. After she died, posthumously, I hope I said that word right, then she's recognized and now people know who she is. People will put Vivian Meyer on this pedestal, which she deserves to be. She's a fantastic photographer. They will talk about her. They'll break her down. They'll do YouTube videos about her. They write books about her. All these different things about Vivian Meyer. But they want immediate success and think, oh, just, you know, I want the success she had just the way she has it. I'm going to be the next Vivian Meyer. Baby girl, do you understand that the success she had, she never got to witness it. She never got to speak for it. She never got to explain what she was thinking on this composition, that composition. But you think it should be immediate and accessible for you. You don't see people grind. You don't see Peter McKinnon whenever he was making the five minute Friday videos and that got him a bunch of followers. But everyone expects that and you want it immediately. You want the instant gratification of being noticed and being loved. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If Instagram did not exist, 50% of people who are into film photography and digital photography right now would not be photographers. You would have never picked up a camera. You would have never bought that, bought that Contax T2. You would have never bought that, that Pentax 6x7. You would have never bought that Fuji X-Pro3. You would have never bought, never bought that Canon R5. You would have never become a boudoir shooter. You would have never tried to shoot sports photography. You would have never done portraits. You would have never started your own business. Why? Because you want the clout and the notoriety that comes from something that the reason why they're famous, the reason why, why Valandis is known, why Willem is known, is because they're shooting shit that makes them happy and is honest coming from them. You're shooting shit that got a response when they shot it and it's unhonest from you. The wildest thing ever. I have seen so many people, my boy Andrew Tan brought, brought this up, so many people, they're trading their whole damn setup to buy like a Q2 because Peter McKinnon made a video. How lame is that shit? How lame is that shit? And if that's you, let me tell you something. You are a lame dude. You are a lame woman. You are a lame they. I don't know what you are, but you are lame as shit. And stop being that. Stop. You are a better person and you are a better photographer than you're getting yourself credit for. You can trade your gear to have the exact same stuff and film stocks as Valandish. You can trade your gear to have the exact same gear as me, as Dorian Coleman, as Willem Verbeek, as Pete McKinnon, as Laika Lee, as Ryan Troy, as Tony and Chelsea Northrup, as, um, you know, Paltutech, as, um, you know, all these people. You can trade all your gear and you will not make the same thing because your shit is insincere and your shit is not that good. You think that people are successful and just get lucky with photography? Like, it, it's one of the worst ideas ever is that people think if I just have what they have, I can make the exact same thing, have the exact same effect, and have the exact same notoriety. Weirdest thing ever. Even more weird, talking to my boy Dorian Coleman, and he'll talk more about this, I'm sure, on his channel, but he has the opportunity to actually give back to his community and teach certain um, individuals, some young individuals about photography, about the basis of photography, and walk them through a lot of things whenever it comes to the artistic side and be an actual teacher. These kids are soaking up all the information. They're not bitching. They're not whining. They're understanding principles, basic principles of photography, exposure, comp or, um, composition, all these things easily. And why? Because they're not tainted by this bullshit idea of clout and that, oh, you know what? The camera and shit really matters. There's so many adults who their first cameras when they came into it were a Canon 2Ti or they shot film like me or they were shooting on a 5D Mark I, some kind of DSLR, that now when you're getting all these other cameras that actually have amazing autofocus, you're like, man, this is amazing. I can't believe that we have this right now and you see it as a privilege. And then there's so many people that they come in and they're immediately their first camera's an A7 III. Immediately their camera's a, a Canon EOS R. Immediately their camera's an X Pro 3, an XE4. It's their first camera. Um, immediately their camera's a Pentax 6-7. Immediately the camera's a Mia 6, a, a, a Leica um, M4, an M6, whatever it is. Immediately that's their first camera that they're spoiled by everything and they assume that because I have this gear, I'm great. 
and it's the dumbest thing ever. Listen, whether you have an X Pro 3, whether you have an X Pro 1, whether you have a Leica M11, whether you have a Yashica FX3, which was my first camera that I ever had, it doesn't matter what you have. If your images are ass, you're ass. And a lot of photographers out there, if it wasn't for autofocus, if it wasn't for IAF, it was, if it wasn't for film simulations, if it wasn't for auto exposure, you would be so exposed and you would be ass. You would be on the Ken Wheeler, Mount Rushmore of talk a lot of shit and find out subsequently. So that's the thing that just is wild to me is that you guys don't put any of the work you haven't been grinding on the internet on YouTube like 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 Valandis, like uh, Willem, like uh, Pete McKinnon, like Manny Ortiz. You haven't been grinding in the streets, going around taking photos, getting up to people, conversating. Them. You're not grinding like like Gadget. You're not grinding like Stock Easy, like J Jason Roman. Um, you're not grinding like a lot of these people. But you want the instant notoriety, and you think if I just copy the shit out of these people, I'll be good to go. And it is the lamest thing ever. It is wild, it is sickening, it is a mental illness, bruv. It is crazy. This is the third time I've recorded this video and it always ends up here because I just get frustrated. This video is supposed to be talking to people about how to get away from it, but it ends up me getting frustrated because I see this all the time. And I hear this all the time. I, I, I see people who they feel entitled and I mean, uh, you know, I see people will they'll add me in a group chat or they'll talk to me or they'll be other talk shit about another photographer or they'll bring up about or I hear other photographers who are well known on YouTube or on Instagram and then people are sending me screenshots like, oh yeah, I talked to this guy, I don't really like him because he said this and it's these people complaining about, I don't like that John Branch is bigger than me. I don't like that this person is bigger than me. I don't like that this person has more photos. I deserve this. I deserve this. Listen, if you don't have the following, if you don't have the amount of people um, looking after you, you're not getting the revenue off of YouTube that you want. You have to continue to grind. You can't bitch and moan on your way to that and then act like that never happened. You just put your nose down and you grind. You get better at what you're doing. You go out and you take photos. You make a look for yourself. You, it's fine with being known with just your city, with just your area. A pastor once told me that there are so many people that want to be a pastor of a church of 300,000 people and they're called to be a pastor of 30, maybe 300 people. That's it. So you want to be a channel that has 30,000, 3 million people and changing the world, 30,000 subscribers. Listen, maybe you're only supposed to have 30 people subscribe to you, 300, 3,000, maybe that's it. But you have to be content with that because you should be content with your work. And if you're not, and if you're pissed and you feel like, oh man, this work deserves more, your heart's not in it right. And you're fake and it's lame and your images show that. A lot of people can hype you up and a lot of people can tell you great. A lot of people tell me that I'm great. Bro, my images 95% of the time are ass. I haven't been happy with an image besides sports photography in years. Why? Because I'm just honest with myself. These aren't the best that I can do. This isn't the best that I've done. There's more in my throwaway folder, meaning stuff that is never going to be seen the light of day here that are hanging on my walls and stuff like that, that are actually good, decent photos than anything I'm showing anyone. And I'm aware of that. But you have to know yourself and you have to be humble about what's going on. Listen, I didn't buy these cameras and I don't use these cameras because I'm trying to be like someone. I use these cameras because I like photography, I enjoy it and it's fun. So one day the success that comes with me liking and enjoying this amazing hobby slash I guess profession of mine is going to come to fruition and is going to really um, help me reap all it from everything that I've sown in my photography career. But there are a lot of you that are buying this stuff, that are getting into debt, that are getting stuff that you're not good at, you don't understand software applications, cards, lenses, all this shit, just to be seen by a few people and to get a little bit of clout and you will never reap the reward you want. Why? Because no one will ever give a shit about a bad counterfeit. If I put this X Pro 3 in someone's hand and say, I'll give it to you for $100, someone's gonna give me $100 right now off the bat. But if I hand them that and say, you have the choice between this one and I pull up a plastic X Pro 3 that looks exactly the same, or this plastic X Pro 3, you can buy either one you want for $100. You ever think they're gonna grab that plastic shit? No, and that's you. Stop it. Quit being a lame. Quit doing all this shit where you're trying to idolize people. You're trying to be exactly like them. Quit copying people. Quit riding their wave. Quit saying, oh, I'm inspired by someone. Whenever the only thing you're inspired by is the amount of followers that they have. You're inspired by the way that they act. You're inspired by their culture. This is the Valandis effect. 
when someone can have such an effect on so many people that they decide, you know, that they want to change their <laughs> characteristics, their personality, everything to match this person because they think that's going to make them create better. They think that's going to get them more exposure. They think that's going to get them more clout. It's the wildest thing ever and it runs rampant in the photography community. We'll see how this one does. I have a feeling it's not gonna do many numbers, but even if it doesn't, it doesn't matter because it still stays the same. Stop being a counterfeit. Stop, stop idolizing someone's clout and stop being inspired by someone's clout and telling people you're inspired by the way that they shoot. You're inspired by the artwork. That's not true. It's two different things. Really look inside yourself. If all that you've ever created has been to match someone else, you've never created one thing that's true to yourself. So with that being said, take it light, but take it and have a good one.